Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Alex Berlach of Proteantex. We're going to talk, going to talk today about real-time safety monitoring. Alex, where does real-time monitoring fit in with functional safety? So, real-time safety monitoring is a solution that goes beyond the existing best-known methods that usually relies on a pass-fail, on a logic piece and similar mechanism, or actually rely on a um, screening that is happening during the uh, manufacturing stages and not monitoring the, the functionality of the chip in a real-life situation under real functional workloads, under real use condition that uh, in, in the automotive yeah, segment. Yeah. And as we know, uh, it's critical that uh, all the electronics within the car will operate in a clear, in a, in a good manner, so we will be able to keep everyone safe. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Alex, what are we looking at? So what we are seeing here is uh, basically the operation of our new application of uh, real-time safety monitoring. We see a, a monitoring of timing margin within the chip over time uh, as the chip is operating in a functional, under functional workloads in the car. We have a different threshold lines, a predictive line, prescriptive line, and safety line threshold. And the black line here represents the actual margin. So what we're doing actually is monitoring the actual timing margin from within the chip. Once it's crossing, for whatever reason, under functional workload, crossing the predictive line, that's where we are starting to provide a parametric index of, or performance index of how far are we from a failing point. And, it, and this is providing a, a predictive component to the monitoring uh, functionality. Once the margin, for whatever reason, crossing the prescriptive line, that's where we are becoming a proactive, proactive in, in our approach and providing a mechanism to boost back the voltage to... So rather than cutting the margin down to the bare minimum, what you're doing is saying you can do other things with that margin that are helpful in this safety situation, right? Basically, there are, uh, we have additional applications that we can fine-tune other components like voltage and temperature to optimize the, using the, the, the visibility that with the margin agent. In this case, we're actually monitoring the margin and enabling the res a fast response time to a sort of so-called safety events that can impact the chip performance and able to basically to both to detect and to respond uh, to it in an effective manner to recover from it and go away from the uh, risky region. The response time on this has to be really quick, right? Because when you're thinking about safety in a car that's moving 60, 70 miles an hour down the highway, you need an instant response. That's correct. We, the response time is a critical effect here, and it's actually implemented in the way we are designed both the agents and the monitoring ecosystem. So the response has to be built into the chip itself, right? Or at least the system right around the chip as opposed to going up to the cloud. Correct. This is a solution that is a closed loop solution. It does not require to offload the data from the chip. Uh, the application is working as part of the incorporated in the firmware of our customers and working in a real time in a closed loop, uh, providing the decisions that uh, using the visibility that the agents are providing. When we think about failures when it comes to safety, it's not just about the chip actually failing. It can be, this is not behaving as well as it should be optimally, right? That's correct. The, the chip is not the only component that we are monitoring because the chip is actually uh, integrated into the system and in, within, with the agents that are, that are implemented in the chip, we can actually monitor also aspects around the chip in the system. So you can think about the chip as a sort of mega sensor or mega agent for the system itself. And we have a lot of experience of detecting, of detecting this, uh, all kinds of uh, issues that are happening outside of the chip as well. One of the things about predictive analytics is you're really looking at, okay, this is coming in the future. How do you measure that? So one, one of the things that we provide a lot of value is going beyond the, the world of pass or fail. And we are coloring the world in the sense that we are providing a parametric measurement of, uh, of different KPIs from within the chip. As part of these parametrics, we are able to quantify how far away we are from a failure. And in that way, provide a predictive, uh, predictive visibility into what is going to happen. So in this case, based on the different types of monitoring 
signals that are coming from our agents, we are providing one performance index that indicates uh, how close or far away we are from, from a failure and customers can react to, to it. How quickly does that performance indicator show up? So there are a couple of mechanisms to address that. The performance in index is, is basically continuously um, updated, but we have additional mechanism that corresponds or, or augment the performance index that works in terms of provides a additional inter hardware interrupts that can speed up some of the responses time. So it's a combination of a sort of a, a software processing plus some hardware implementation that covers the entire response time uh, to, to, to provide uh, enough time for the, for the car to take the action. Does this only go into the functional safety systems inside a vehicle, or can it go into other systems too? Because you think about a, a tire, for example, that's not really functional safety, but at the same time, if, it, if it air is coming out of that, that's going to cause a problem somewhere else. Yeah, so the, it goes basically to all the different kinds of silicon in the, in the car. By the way, not only in the car, other, other, play, other segments as well, it's data center and uh, a mobile, etc. Uh, but everywhere you have a mission critical component uh, or silicon, that's, this application can be relevant. So how does this actually work inside a chip? So basically we have uh, three components to our solution. Uh, our regular engagement works that we are integrating where the customer is integrating our set of agents in, in, during their design flow. Um, we provide the tools to do that. While the, once the agents are integrated inside and the chip is fabricated, when the chip is coming back from, uh, from the fab, we are providing to our customers uh, both uh, analytics platform and uh, software and applications that they can leverage the agents inside the tool. These applications, like the applications you, you see here, are built using different uh, algorithms. Some of them are uh, machine learning based, some of them are traditional algorithms that process all the data that is coming from the agents and provide a different parametrics KPI that, that the customers can take decisions. Where else can you pick up these kinds of anomalies in behavior? Does it always have to be in the field or can you do it even before that? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and actually, we believe in an end-to-end -end solution. So uh, what you've seen here is more uh, detection of uh, abnormalities or some misbehavior in the field. But we also have applications and algorithms that can detect some abnormalities during manufacturing itself. Uh, this is happening during production testing at wafer sort or final test in the, system, in the chip lab. But also uh, we have all kinds of solutions that detect outliers in the system production testing uh, and overall creates a, a better quality and a better reliability uh, electronic systems out there that combine both uh, manufacturing and infield monitoring. Alex Burlak, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you so much.